Ah, another great ride on the Amtrak Northeast Corridor ends at Washington, D.C. Much better than driving. I can relax, I can buy food, and on the train I met two people whom I let sit in the aisle seat. Tell me, when was the last time you met someone new while you were behind the wheel driving down 95? Now, to the metro. I already loaded up my Apple Wallet Smart Trip card. Oh, come on! Oh, there we go. Stylish metro station, right? Hey, the train's arriving as I speak. Awesome! I've forgotten how much I love the DC Metro. Doors opening. Seriously? Oh, okay. Have a good day, thank you. Ah, so nice to be back. Please stand clear. And hold on to the handrail, YouTube. The Jago Mover is now departing for the next video. Welcome to our next stop, Washington Grove, aka the Town in the Forest. Located in Montgomery County, Maryland, a little over 20 miles northwest of Washington, D.C. This neighborhood, or more accurately township, this is the town hall, has a very special feature. It's pedestrian-only streets. If you look at this map of the township, a good part of the arteries, marked in green, are only for pedestrians. A few other streets, marked in yellow, are restricted to local traffic, either by virtue of ending at modal filters or at people's houses. Better yet, except for the roads ending at modal filters, all of the arteries marked in green or yellow are not paved, making it clear which roads allow through traffic and those that don't. And the streets that are open to general car movement, marked in orange, are very narrow, i.e. cars naturally go slower than normal. Well, as slow as any American driver. This essentially means it is perfectly safe to walk on any street in the neighborhood, even those open to cars, though it is definitely more fun to walk on the streets with no cars at all. There's also the added benefit that, with fewer and narrower vehicular streets, fewer trees needed to be cut down, which means more tree cover and cooler temperatures in the summer. I didn't grow up here, but this was the place my family traveled to for Thanksgiving. I was the type of kid who preferred to run around pretending I was a train rather than chat with relatives. Most places, I would be stuck in someone's backyard. But in Washington's Grove, my parents would let me walk up and down the pedestrianized streets all by myself from a very young age. They didn't need to worry about me being hit by a car because there wasn't any fast-moving traffic. And it's not just the walkways that make Washington Grove great either. First of all, there's a park with a big playground, a tennis court, and a field to do things like play soccer. Oh, that playground looks really fun. I can't resist! On the other side of the neighborhood, across Washington Grove Road, is a lake you can swim in in the summer. 
Though I agree with that swim at your own risk sign. The water does not taste good. I've swam in it. There's a short trail that goes into the forest if you want to get into nature. You can actually see the boundaries of the township because beyond them, in Gaithersburg, you can see the typical American suburban homes. Washington Grove is also just a more interesting place to be in than a typical American suburban neighborhood. Look at the diversity in the architecture here. And because quite a few of the streets are car free, the design of yards varies a lot too. For example, the yard of this house is technically on the other side of 5th Avenue as the house itself. Something like that would never happen in a typical car dependent neighborhood. Oh, and did I show you the human-scaled nature-themed street signs? North America, why aren't we building more suburbs like this? I see no reason for anyone to get NIMBY toward a place like this. Even if you need a car to get in and out of the neighborhood, which, as you'll see in the case of Washington Grove, you don't, this kind of neighborhood is just a nicer place to live in. The area around Washington Grove isn't a complete car sewer either. Just northeast on Washington Grove Road, there's a decent amount of mid-density housing that you can easily walk to from Washington Grove. A short distance west is the town of Gaithersburg, which has a nice walkable main street and is also mostly surrounded by mid-density, relatively walkable housing. So yeah, I love Washington Grove, though I've gained a new appreciation for it ever since I got into urbanism, especially after watching Alan Fisher's video on The Grove in Pittman, New Jersey, a similar pedestrianized neighborhood, link in the cards and description. You might notice both pedestrian neighborhoods have the word Grove in it. It turns out that the similarity in names is not a coincidence, and to see why we need only to walk to the neighborhood church. Wow, this place has everything. Side note. I don't want to play theologian, but imagine what would happen if everyone who goes to a church, temple, or mosque could just walk or bike to the one in their own neighborhood, and then give all the money they would have spent on driving to religious charity, not to mention the reduced environmental destruction from the elimination of parking lots that are as big as the churches themselves. I think that would have a big positive impact on the world. But anyway, both the Grove in Pittman, New Jersey and Washington Grove in Maryland were built during the same time period by the same kind of people for the same purpose. After the Civil War, the United Methodist Churches in Washington, D.C. wanted to buy a plot of land for a permanent campsite to escape the heat of the summer. At the same time, the B&O Railroad was building a new line, the Metropolitan Branch, from Washington, D.C. to Point of Rocks, Maryland, thus allowing trains to travel directly between Washington, D.C. and points west without traveling via Baltimore. Near Gaithersburg, a piece of undeveloped land next to the under-construction line was up for sale. It was bought by the church organization and was used as a summer camp for the first time in 1873. Now, those who watched Alan Fisher's video will remember that Pittman also developed around a railroad line, but the line running through Pittman no longer has passenger trains. So, you might ask, does Washington Grove still have passenger trains? And to that question, I have good news, bad news, and then some more good news. The good news is that Washington Grove still has its train station. The Metropolitan Branch developed into the B&O and now CSX's main line as Washington, D.C. became a more important city. The station is still served by the Brunswick Line of the Maryland Area Rail Commuter, or MARC train, which connects Washington, D.C. to cities and towns in Maryland. The bad news is that the Brunswick Line receives the worst service out of the three lines on MARC. On weekdays, about 10 trains go into D.C. in the morning and then come back out again in the afternoon. That's it and there's no service on weekends. But what's worse for Washington Grove is that half of the trains bypass the station, and the ones that are scheduled to stop will only do so if someone is on the platform signaling to the engineer, or if somebody on the train tells the conductor they want to get off at Washington Grove. This train, for what it's worth, breezed right past me even though I was on the platform. Don't worry, I wasn't trying to get on anyway. How would I get back? And if that isn't bad enough, the final two outbound trains in the evening are marked as discharge only, meaning the train won't stop unless somebody already on the train has told the conductor they are getting off. No notes. I'm going to slam Mark in its own future video. Now to be fair, there is another station nearby in downtown Gaithersburg where all Brunswick Line trains are scheduled to stop, and it's less than a 10 minute bus or bike ride away on a road that has a sidewalk all the way. 
But it's frustrating to me that the train that is the most easily accessed without a car gets skipped by most trains. And like I said, the Brunswick Line service in general is bad. But even though the station isn't that useful, it's still a great place to watch trains, which is another plus to living in the neighborhood, especially for kids. Unfortunately, the train tracks also stand in between Washington Grove and its sending elementary school, which means parents in this neighborhood have become more hesitant to let their kids walk to school, even with monitors assisting kids to cross the tracks. Now, to be fair, the station, which is where you cross the tracks, is located on a blind curve, so it can be hard to see trains coming. The crossing also doesn't have any proper warning signals that warn people of an approaching train. And to be honest, this road next to the track is a bigger danger to kids with their relatively high-speed traffic. But still, it's kind of a shame because the elementary school is at most a 20-minute walk from the other side of the neighborhood, which is very doable for kids, and it wakes you up before school. But anyway, time for the good news. Washington Grove is served by not one, but two Montgomery County ride-on buses, the 57 and 61, which both stop right on the edge of the neighborhood. The 61 drops you off right at the Mark Station. The buses can get you to a lot of local destinations, including the Gaithersburg Mark Station, as I said before, and this suburban shopping mall that's being turned into a multi-use development, the local supermarket, and most importantly, the Shady Grove Metro Station, where you can catch a red line train every few minutes directly into downtown DC, including Union Station where you can catch an Amtrak train to almost anywhere in the eastern United States. The fares for the ride-on bus are also cheap and simple, one dollar flat fare. Better yet, you aren't limited to paying with exact change. You can load a virtual smart trip card onto your phone, which conveniently you can also use to ride the metro. The critical thing about both of these routes is that they provide good service. Both routes run seven days a week from pretty early in the morning to pretty late in the evening and at a pretty good frequency, between every 20 to 35 minutes on weekdays and at no more than 45 minutes during the weekends. It's not perfect, but it's usable, and suburbs across America would be much more accessible if they were served by transit like this. And if the intro didn't make it clear enough, the ride-on bus was how I got to and from Washington Grove, and I had no trouble at all. And I can say firsthand that plenty of other people were taking the bus too. Now, I don't want to sugarcoat things on this channel, so I will also point out a couple of critiques about Washington Grove. First of all, there is a strip mall on the southwest side of the neighborhood that, while it does have a post office and somehow three separate hair salons, it doesn't have a grocery store or any place that sells food. Now, as I said, it's only a short ride on a relatively frequent bus to the big box grocery store where you can probably find anything you need. But you can't beat somewhere you can walk to. And another minor gripe, there's a highway, I-395, that feels like it was built just to cut off Washington Grove and the surrounding communities from the area around the metro station. It's also close enough that it spoils the quiet a bit on the trail in the forest. But at least the construction of the highway didn't plow through Washington Grove and destroy the community, which seems like it might have been a possibility considering the way it bends around the township. That said, Washington Grove is still one of the best neighborhoods or towns in the United States, and it should absolutely be a model for how we design any future suburb or lower density transit oriented development in the future. This is the last stop for the Jago Mover today. Before leaving, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so I can provide you with more videos like this.